white beam, to me, is a, a very intriguing upset possibility. She should be four, five, six to one. Saratoga Saturday on Pass the Wire TV. It is Alabama Day, uh, one of our or my favorite uh, races of the Saratoga meet in season. Three-year-old fillies going a mile and a quarter on the main track. Uh, and there's nothing like starting a Saratoga Saturday, regardless of the weather that may disappoint us up there sometimes, regardless of the field sizes and everything else that's inherent to Saratoga. One thing never disappoints and is the best way to start your Saratoga morning is with a cup of ice cold sure bet brew coffee nothing like it already a winner can't go wrong chin chuck shout out for the formula one hat grazie appreciate it uh wearing it on the show like i told you um not a lot to talk about we're going to get into two races last last week uh we couldn't we we couldn't we couldn't top the Whitney week. We know that. Uh you know, three three big price horses, bang, 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 making it count. We we weren't gonna top that. But we we like two spots in the two stakes, one horse one really big. And uh what I thought was interesting about that horse in the Saratoga special was a lot of people were saying, you know, the Ellis Park horses are not running that good. And we knew that, but we knew that this one was too fast for these. And I'm talking about rhyme schemes uh, who ran off the chart. Uh, let's take a little break, uh, say hello to some friends, get in the mood, get ready to roll. And uh, we've got two spots in the two stakes on Saturday as well. We've got the, uh, what is it? The Lake Placid and of course, the Alabama. <laughs> Hotburn, very interesting in Detroit, in my opinion. This is a horse that always showed a lot of potential. Uh, exploded second time out, win by four. Here comes Cogburn, and Cogburn has his sights on Nobles in the final 16th of a mile. There's a lot of turf in this pedigree, top and bottom. It will be Cogburn on the outside getting to the front. The other thing that I like about, about Cogburn a lot is when I look at his star graph numbers. Uh, he's got some fast races. He's got a one. And Cogburn under Ricardo Santana Jr. wins the Troy. I love in these three-year-old races. Again, those of you that, that, that watched the show and have been reading you know, you know, my columns and a lot of my handicapping things all over the years know I like up-and-comers. I like betting horses to do things that, you, you know, maybe we can anticipate that some others can and that's how you sometimes beat um, a lot of favorites. I like program trading. And program trading, program trading, resilient coming back on the inside. Program trading would not be denied. Quite a barrier was very interesting to me for a couple of reasons. We heard from Blake, we know what the bond thinks, okay? Second time Rick Dutrow. This time gets the jump from the catbird seat and Turn it for home. White of Barrio was going to be in the race, if not on the lead, in the race, and the one they got to go get. Really they're at the top of the stretch in the Whitney, and White of Barrio is the leader narrowly over Giant Game. We've had Irad breezing him a bunch at Belmont before he came up here. I know Irad really likes him. You know, we think that he should improve off of his last race. And, you know, if he gets a clean trip, we're expecting him to run big. Look at White. A Barrio in a red, Ortiz Jr. in a runaway. White a Barrio wins by almost six lengths. Rhyme schemes on on the outside. Uh, the bottom horse for Norm Cassie. Uh, 
Boss didn't do a lot of running first time out at Churchill Downs going five eighths of a mile and what I thought was a pretty fast race on, on not such a fast track that day. Uh, he was six by nine, didn't really do any running, but he only went off, you know, six, seven and one. So he took some money and that turned out to be a very live race. Bunch of horses come out of that race to win, which I, I like with, 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 with two year olds. And they're off and Woodcourt flies out of the gate, immediately joined by Market Street. And these two duel through the opening furlong. Rhyme Schemes gets a good spot, two off the pace in third. But he can certainly clear, and, and, and Santana is, a, is is aggressive. And I can see this horse going two for two with the blinkers, and I'm hoping that they bet Pletcher's horse and the other horse. And now Rhyme Schemes makes the move at the top of the stretch. It's a good one, too. Rhyme Schemes takes over, opens up two on Market Street in second. In the center of the track, it's Hall in third, but with a furlong left to go. Rhyme Schemes is long gone. A spectacular display from Rhyme Schemes. Running home all alone in the Saratoga Special by eight or nine lengths. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Frankie Vittori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto, yes, that's a good start. <laughs> so you, have, you, you haven't lost your Italian. Frankie Dettori, legend, world-class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV. You know, on, on the, on the Pass the Wire website, they have a, a bio of me and it, it talks a little bit about the Alabama. Uh, and one, one day when I was up at Saratoga, you know, I used to spend a whole month up there with my mom and dad. My dad was a mutual clerk. So we were up there for the whole month. That was like our summer vacation. My poor dad was working, but it was kind of like a vacation for us, you know? Um, and back then it was August. So we all looked, you know, forward to getting out of the city and spending you know, August up at Saratoga. My dad would work behind the windows. My mom would sit in the reserve seats with her friends. And uh, I would run all over all over the grounds like I owned the place. Uh, and that was pretty much our summer. Uh, <clears throat> one year we were up there and and this is when I, I was I was young and I first learned how to handicap. And the story's on the website, so I won't go into too great detail, but I came up with it's in the air to go wire to wire and beat uh, a Calumet Farm Philly champion. Uh, shout out to Fred Cray and his phenomenal book on Ali Dar and Calumet Farm, uh, Broken. We did an interview with him on here. Uh, you can get that book. It's well worth reading. And the story of Calumet is just a sad and fascinating story. And the story of Ali Dar is heartbreaking. But um it's in the air, Harborview Farm Horse with Jeffrey Fell. Looked easy to me. 
Um, I walked around the track all day, borrowing money, scraping up as much money as I could bet. Uh, bet a lot of money for a kid back then. She won. <laughs> what an easy game I thought this was. Paid everybody back and then some. And uh, was on our way. Uh, it's in the air. Uh, beat Devona Dale that day. Uh, great, great memory and great times uh, for me. Uh, we're going to get to the Alabama in a minute, but we're going to start with the Lake Placid, where I probably have, uh, by a by a narrow margin, a photo finish, I would say, the stronger opinion of the two races that we're going to talk about. Now, mind you, there's a lot of other races on, on, on the card. There's a lot of, you know, high profile maidens running and, 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 and other spots. But, you know, we're not going to cover the whole card. We're going to cover these two spots. Uh, but I will say this word to the wise, and I've been saying it all meet long and you know it, if you've been watching the show and following along and you watched our pure platinum Saratoga angles show, which I hope you did the horses for the course turf and dirt are doing extremely well. Uh, the horses that have won and are coming and running back are doing extremely well. Pay attention to them. It pays. Uh, Without further ado, uh, in the Lake Placid, I like number four, tax implications with Manny Franco up for Chad Brown. Five to one on the morning line, I think is really fair, and I hope that we get it. Um, I doubt that we will. I think she's going to be a little bit shorter than that. Uh, but I think uh, that's where I land. Um Surge capacity did beat her last time. Uh, got a nice trip up the rail. Uh, tax implications went wide, uh, but finished very, very well. Uh, that was a mile over a yielding course into splits of you know 25 and change, 50 and change, 114 and change, almost 115. Uh, not an ideal set of splits to rally into. And... You know, at a mile, she really had her work cut out for her. I see more pace in this race with, you know, fillies like Heavenly Sunday and Glorious Princess and uh, prerequisite. So, you know, I'm hoping that she gets a little bit more pace to rally in, into. I like the running inside. And I, I think she's going to be a handful in, 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 in the late class of tomorrow. Uh, that said, uh, the, you, you know, the other horse that I, I, I really looked long and hard at, uh, was Todd Pletcher's horse off the layoff, the Juniper Marshmallow. Uh, I could see her coming back and running a big race and, and, and surprising a lot of people at a, at a, at a, at a very nice price for you know, Pletcher and Jose Ortiz, but I don't see her having enough gas in the tank to beat tax implications tomorrow, who I think is going to, is going to win the Lake Placid. Uh, Manny's riding, uh, you know, pretty tough and pretty hard. He's not getting the opportunities that he did downstate, you know, and that's normal for Saratoga. We know that. Uh, but Chad runs this horse right back. And uh, I think she turns the table on, uh, surge capacity and beats the rest of them as well. Now, something interesting I will point out, um, and we've discussed this on our thoroughbred shows, okay? Love, love the pattern on tax implications. Uh, as a two-year-old, first time out, she runs a 12. She goes slightly forward to 11 and, 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 and three quarters, like it. Comes back, runs better than her two-year-old numbers. She runs a nine and a quarter. Then in the Saratoga race uh, that she lost to Chad's other horse, she runs a seven and a half. Here's what's interesting and why the numbers get so telling. And, and, and this is an angle that we talked about on, on a lot of our thoroughbred shows. It's when the loser um, gets a better number than the winner. Well, tax implications in the Glens Falls, I think that was, got a seven and a half surge capacity got a nine so she got um and 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 her pattern 
you know, she paired, you know, nine and a half. Well, she ran a nine and a half and then a nine. So she kind of paired nine, but she ran a nine and a half and a nine. So she did go forward a little bit, but, you know, the other horse got almost two points, better, bet, bet, better number. Um, love that angle all day long. Uh, over time, it will prove to be a very profitable, strong angle. So um, it's tax implications for me in the Lake Placid. Uh, let me know who you would like in the comments and what you think of of that. And 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 also, I'm interested in what a lot of you think of that angle about the uh, loser getting a better better thoroughbred number than the winner. You'll never see that on a buyer or a Brisnet number or on on a raw speed figure. You just it just doesn't happen that way. But you will see it on the thoroughbred, um, and it's a very very uh, significant angle in, in my view. Uh, so I'm curious to see what 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 you think about that and uh, how you all weigh in. So uh, we'll take another quick break and we'll come back and talk about the big race, the Alabama, and see if we can pull another it's in the air um, out of this one. So hang tight and we'll be back in a minute. here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. It is here, the big day, the day almost all of us in horse racing wait for, Breeders' Cup Saturday. It looks like we're gonna see some really, really impressive races on Saturday. It starts with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, one of my stronger opinions on the card is, is Goodnight Olive to start things off. I think she gets a perfect trip. Goodnight Olive, six in a row and a Breeders' Cup champion. We've got modern games going in the turf mile for Godolphin. Uh, the Godolphin and Aiden O'Brien horses we said on Pass the Wire TV all week long on the backside. Those two contingents stuck out from all the rest. Modern Games looking for a, a, a big race in front of him. Modern Games storming down the center of the court. Modern Games, a two-time Raiders Cup winner. You bet he is. That is Rebels Romance, who in my humble opinion is one of Godolphin's uh, better chances this year. Rebels Romance is a very, very good looking Godolphin horse that can absolutely win this race. Rebels Romance is a must use. Rebels Romance, rolling on the outside, Portland got it, makes her big note toward the inside. Rebels Romance down the center of the court, has it, goes to home. Rebels Romance wins the turf over Stone Age. We got Flightline that they're putting in the best ever category. There's no question that the race he ran in the Pacific Classic is one of the best races we've seen any racehorse run ever. It is Flightline, it is mind tingling, jaw dropping, awe inspiring, secretariat like. I thought the Alabama this year was a really, really competitive race. Uh, first off, the good news is we got we got ten horses instead of four or five or three, uh, so that's that that that's always a a, a positive. 
uh, wet paint is going to be the favorite. You know, I was really high on wet paint earlier in the year. Uh, I thought she ran some powerful races at, at Oak Lawn Park. Even though she won uh, last time out, she's kind of disappointed me since then. I don't think she's as good as I originally thought she was, but uh, she is good, uh, but not, not where I land. Um, I like a, a horse I think is very dangerous and, and, and fresh and just going to get a really, really nice trip and going to make a, a, a big forward move. One, one of the things we talked about on, on some of the previous Saratoga Saturday shows, and I always like to leave you with, you know, these takeaway angles, because a lot of times they could help you in the future when, 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 when we don't have a show or when you, you know, you're there on your own making a decision or you just need a second set of eyes and a second, you know, second opinion. And we're not here talking and, and doing a show and say, oh yeah, John said this or John said that. And maybe it'll help you. Uh, I like um, an angle and something that a lot of people don't. I like betting horses on the come or betting horses to do something that, that you believe and you feel in your heart they can do and were meant to do that they may not have done yet. Now, a lot of people will say, yeah, I never bet a horse to do something that they haven't done already. I say nonsense. Um, I say one of the things that makes a sharp player uh, and a good handicapper is, is being able to anticipate those kind of things and capitalize on them. Uh, that said, I like, I like Julia Shining, Todd Pletcher's horse, who has not run since the Ashland in, in April. Um, you know, wasn't around for the Kentucky Oaks, uh, the Black Eyed Susan, any of the other races at Naira, for the three-year-old Phillies, the Acorn, Mother Goose Coaching Club. Nowhere to be found. Training, and in my opinion, pointing for the Alabama. This this curling filly out of Dreaming of Julia, who at her best was capable, I think at the time she ran a, a five negative on Thorograph, uh, when she won that race at Gulfstream. And I bet against her. I bet Princess of Silmar in the Oaks that year and paid a big price. Uh, and I always, you know, kind of humble bragged that, ah, dreaming of Julia, you know, bounced and regressed. But she did have trouble coming out of the gate. And there was no shade way she was going to run another five negative. But she could have regre regressed and won. But she didn't. Princess of Silmar won. But that was then. This is now. Uh I, I think Julia Shining is sitting on a big race. I think, you know, Curlin, dreaming of Julia out of it, you know, she's an AP Indian mare, screams mile and a quarter. Um, love her works leading into the race. Love that I believe um, Todd has pointed her here. Um, Luis Saez, one of the best in the world, uh, strong finisher, never gives up. This Philly won both her starts at two. Uh, she won at seven eights first time out of Keeneland, uh, come back and won a hard fought um, grade two Demoiselle at Aqueduct in the slop when, you know, she was, she was one to two and everybody thought she was going to win easy. Um, she looked beat, Luis dug in and, and, and got it done. Comes back into Suncoast as a three-year-old at Tampa. Didn't really get bet like she should have that day at, 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 at five to two. Um, Ran okay, ran an okay third over, over the quirky Tampa track, uh, off the layoff. Um, kept digging into defining purpose, who's in the Alabama, uh, in the grade one Ashland. Didn't quite get up. It was her first race with Blinkers. They stay on, uh, and now she gets a mile and a quarter to work with, uh, fresh and dangerous. And here's another one where I love, love the photograph pattern. On, 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 on this filly in the Alabama. Uh, I really do. As, as, a, as a two-year-old, um, she pairs eights, okay? First start, she's listed as being a little bit green, comes back, pairs the eight in, the, in December in that sloppy race in, in the Demoiselle. Uh, comes back at Tampa, runs a seven and a half, then jumps forward to a four and three quarters in, in, in the Ashland at Keeneland. Now she's fresh gets that mile and a quarter. And what I really think is that at the mile and a quarter, um, Luis is, is not going to have to really get after her early like he has in some of those other races and really work her and push her to try and get up. I think I think a mile and an eighth, a mile and a quarter, um, 
maybe even a little bit a little bit more is is really what what she wants to do and what she's about and i think that that's going to show uh uh, you know, if you just look at the numbers, the you know the four and three quarters is pretty much fast enough to win this race, and as fast as you know, wet paint is run, and 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 you know she's the favorite, so you know she's run a little faster. She's run a four, but you, you know, I just think you know with any kind of forward move at all, um she's she's absolutely in this race for the win uh and i think she's going to get in my opinion um a really nice nice trip uh should be sitting off the pace i don't think that far off the pace i think she'll be sitting in a good spot luis will go to work on her at the right time and you know we know he won't give up and um I'm going to take a nice shot with Julia Shining, and I'm going to take a nice shot with tax implications. Those are the two um, that I am going to build my day around at uh, Saratoga on Saturday. And that's what I got to say on this edition of Saratoga Saturday. Uh, and hopefully we could have another day like we did in the Whitney where we get two horses home. Whitney was three, but here if we can get two home at what I, I feel should be two nice prices, um, could be a good day. And uh Yes, they will be singles for me uh, in any multi-race wages that I decide to go after, but they will also both be bet alone, um, you know, win in a couple of exactors and try and just, you know, make it all count. And hopefully they're as fast as a really fast motorcycle. And I like really fast motorcycles, even though I don't ride them anymore. Uh, but that's how we see it. So, um, let me know what you think of the Alabama. I'll check all the comments. Hope everybody has a great um, Saratoga Saturday, uh, Alabama Day. Uh, they got Delmar. They got a nice race there. Uh, grade one on, on, on the grass for Phillies as well. Uh, so we've got a couple of three-year-old Philly grass races to look at. And it's King's Plate Day um, or Queen's Plate Day. Uh, at Woodbine and uh, Chad Brown is sending that horse Kalik up there to run um, who looked a little bit interesting I haven't really done the race yet but uh, that horse did catch my eye a, a, a little bit out of the open company races here in the U.S. and you know Chad don't send them um, just to get a tour of Toronto so uh, <laughs> interesting interesting races this weekend uh, interesting race for Paddington coming up very soon across the pond. Uh, I happen to think the Godolphin horse that Frankie rides, uh, got a hard time saying his name correctly. So I'm just going to say the Godolphin horse that Frankie rides might give that horse Paddington all that he can handle because he's had some really, really soft trips um, as of late. So that said, uh, great weekend, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, We'll be back next week for a, a big edition of Saratoga Saturday on Past the Wire TV. Ciao for now. Does it better?